This is a Hints from Howard. I'm Howard Strassler. We're going to be talking about diagnosis today using fiber optic transillumination as an additional diagnostic tool. When we talk about fiber optic transillumination, we're talking about FOTI, F-O-T-I. And the principles really use a thin glass cylinder with fibers with a high refractive index bundle to transmit that light, as you can see from uh, this schematic. The light will transmit through the fiber optic bundle, and then wherever we place the end of that bundle, transmitting the light, we'll be able to use that light uh, to visualize uh, different diagnostic uh, conditions. So what are some of the uses of fiber optics in dentistry? Well, fiber optics in, in dentistry are used as accessory illumination for hand pieces, ultrasonic scalers, uh, attachments to magnifying loops, and we can also use them as standalone adjunctive diagnosis and for evaluation, and that's what we're going to be talking about today. So how do we use fiber optic transillumination for adjunctive diagnosis? Well, Primarily for caries diagnosis, for anterior and posterior proximal caries lesions. We can also use it to evaluate occlusal caries lesions, uh, as well as to evaluate existing composite margins to differentiate between the stain or caries that's penetrating at those margins. Uh, we can also use it for other diagnostic uses. When we illuminate the tooth, we can look for cusp fractures, cracked teeth. We can use it to heighten our visualization of endodontic access and root canal orifices. We can use it with existing restorations we're getting back from the lab or that are in the mouth looking at fracture or craze lines of all ceramic restorations. We can also look at fractures and craze lines in enamels as well as when we see extrinsic enamel staining, we're able to evaluate the depth of that stain, and we can use it to make treatment recommendations. And we'll see examples of these different diagnostic uses. First off, one of the most important benefits of transillumination, especially for diagnosis, is we can reduce the patient's exposure to ionizing radiation. Now, we still need radiographs, but there are times where we can make a definitive diagnosis uh, by just transilluminating the teeth and looking at shadows underneath the enamel. Some of the devices, and one that I use that uh, is an excellent device and very reasonable in cost, is the Microlux from Adent. Uh, it uses visible light. It uses an LED. And we have multiple tips to use for diagnosis of proximal caries. Uh, to look at endodontic situations, we can also use it with perio tips to look for calculus and other unusual phenomenon. And we can also uh, clip this on to have an illuminated mirror to look at areas where we can't get our light source. We also see digital devices for transillumination, the most popular being from DEXIS that's paired with their digital radiology uh, system called the carry view. Uh, instead of using visible light, it uses near infrared light uh, combined with uh, a capture device and it's portable and has software. It's similar in appearance to x-ray images and so what we're doing is using a capture video camera that's uh, tuned for near-infrared light, we can look between teeth. And let's take a look at some examples. So it's a companion to the digital x-ray sens sensor and software that DEXIS has. It allows us to look into proximally, as you can see on the two lower images, that we can look and compare our digital image of our radiograph with our digital image uh, using the carry view. We'll be able to do the same thing using an analog device, using a bright light source, using a transilluminator, and matching it to the radiographs that we have, whether it be film or digital. 
And so we're going to look at the non-digital solution with foci, whether it's looking at anterior proximal carious diagnosis, whether it's looking as a confirmation, uh, or as a diagnosis on itself. And you can see on the mesial of this radiograph, tooth number 10 has uh, some shadowing. When we take a transilluminator and illuminate the tooth, we can then compare our radiograph to the transillumination, the physical image that we're seeing in our reflected mirror image. So clinically verifying what we see radiographically. And here you can see that verification on the mesial number 10. Uh, but also take a look at the distal number 10. And we can go to that area also. Even though it doesn't show up significantly on the radiograph, uh, the transilluminator may show it up more significantly and help us make our differential diagnosis and how we're going to decide to proceed with treatment. We can also use tips to look at posterior teeth at interproximal lesions and occlusal lesions. We have for the posterior a choice of illumination tips from just the illuminator tip or a fiber optic that can be placed uh, interproximally between the thin area of the teeth. So here we're looking at using the uh, straight on uh, regular tip. We're looking at the distal of number 20. Clinically, we don't see any evidence. Radiographically, we see evidence. And in fact, when we transilluminate on the uh, distal of number 20, we can see actually what our expectation is for the progression. And you can see clinically the progression is going to be significantly deeper than what we see on the radiograph. We can also use this thin single fiber optic bundle tip for looking interproximally. Here we're looking interproximally on the distal in number 5. When we transilluminate the distal uh, of number uh, 5, what we can see is not just the radiographic extent, but confirm it with how clinically it'll be extending. And you can see that it's a significant lesion uh, that's extending into the dentin. We can also use these lights, bright lights, our fiber optic transillumination, our foci, to evaluate enamel dysplasia fluorosis, to look at the depth of discoloration, the degree of opacity. It'll help us make the decision whether the aesthetic uh, modification will be composite or porcelain veneers, or whether we can use uh, uh, some means of mic micro or macro abrasion to remove that superficial layer of enamel. If the enamel has very deep, opaque white stain stains, this transillumination will show us that it's a deeper stain. And in fact, a restorative solution is better than the minimally invasive uh, macro and micro abrasion solution. Uh, we can also look at incomplete tooth fractures. Uh, using a tooth sleuth, uh, the patient is uh, giving us uh, information that prov provides us with for this a molar with an occlusal composite that the patient's having pain upon biting on this uh, distal lingual cusp. When we transilluminate the tooth, we can see the fracture lines on the lingual surface. Uh, we can also visualize internal fractures of the tooth. In this case, for this occlusal restoration that we've removed, the patient's having pain with the tooth. When we transilluminate, we can see the fracture running across uh, the distal portion of the lingual and the mesial portion of the lingual to include the, uh, the uh, floor of the cavity preparation. On the bottom images, we can see a similar phenomenon for this MOD preparation. It'll help us make a decision if we're going to place a crown with a core uh, or whether we're going to do a CAD-CAM uh, onlay restoration for that tooth. Another use is visualizing endodontic access and root canal orifices. While microscopes have become very, very popular uh, in the uh, treatment of uh, endodontic pathologies, uh, using a transillumination light, it'll help us see even better within those canals to find difficult canals like the 
mesiobuccal second canal on a maxillary first molar. So fiber optic transillumination has many different uses. Uh, using a fiber optic transilluminator, a foci device, we're using an analog device to give us adjunctive diagnosis through caries in the anterior and posterior proximal lesions, occlusal caries, or the differential diagnosis of composite margin staining or caries penetration at those margins. We also know fiber optic transilluminators have uh, diagnostic uses in evaluating cusp fractures, cracked teeth, illuminating endodontic axis and root canal orifices, evaluating craze lines and all ceramic restorations, as well as craze lines of the enamel. We can also look at differential diagnosis of the depth of an extrinsic enamel staining to make a decision for a treatment recommendation to the patient. This was Dr. Howard Strassler with a hints from Howard on diagnosis using fiber optic transillumination as an additional diagnostic tool, another tool in your armamentarium.